Shot! All right, at ease, gentlemen. I hope you've all had a very pleasant leave. But now it's over. Today starts your second year at Cranwell, a year in which you get down to some serious flying. I suppose you've all read the papers lately, and some of you may be wondering what's going to happen to the Royal Air Force in the future, when push-button warfare and robot aircraft become the order. Well, don't let it depress you. None of these things can entirely replace the pilot or the spirit of the service. The demands the Royal Air Force will make in your brains, your strength and your nerves, will be higher than ever before. We carry no passengers at Cranwell, and your work starts now. Good luck, gentlemen. Carry on, Blake. Sir? All right, chaps, grab your kit and get going. to learn, so little time, how can we ever get it in? How long are they going to keep us on this straight and level stuff? Starting enough for me, just flying solo. Don't you boys want to do aerobatics, something with a kick? When we're ready. Well, you'll never be pilots until you do. We won't be angels either. You're down for the low-level cross-country run tomorrow, did you know that? What, I am? All three of you. Oh, that's wonderful. Now you'll be able to work off some of that pent-up emotion, Winchester. Or will you? I'll tell you tomorrow. Cranwell Tower from Delta Bravo. The air is much more turbulent than the map briefing said. They've no doubt failed to take into consideration the increase of convection currents when they made their assessment. Thank you, Delta Bravo. I will see that Beth is severely reprimanded.
I was responsible to be horsewhipped. Breach of the peace, imprisonable offence. My cows won't give milk for a week. Nor will my chickens. And my brother, who was fishing with his fiancée, swears he didn't get a nibble all day. I have here a full list. Low-level flying, upsetting cows, obstructing egg laying, and forcing Colonel to fall on backside. All right, all right, thank you. But well, I'm going to turn the whole matter over to the Wing Commander, who is responsible for flying discipline. Very good, sir. You can rest assured that the matter will be well taken care of. Well, well, I don't think that will you any The Commandant has received complaints of vulgar exhibitionism in the low-flying area. Now, you're all there. I believe one of you is the culprit. I don't have to tell you that this sort of thing merits instant dismissal. There's no room in our service for anyone who cannot be trusted to stick to the rules. However, one thing saved you. The aircraft responsible was not identified. Sir, if I may just... No one gave you permission to speak. But I'm warning you. From now on, I shall watch you like a hawk. In the future, you may not be so lucky. All right, Flight Sergeant. That's sir. Sir, may I just say... Get that? out! That's well, quick march! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right! Excuse me saying so, sir, but aren't you rather sticking your neck out? I mean... Do you think he's really worth it? Yes, Blake, I think he is. I hope you realize if it wasn't for Rudd, you'd have been chucked out. I tried to tell him, didn't I? No, you didn't try very hard. Now you've got us all in the dirt. He's a great one to bleed at our discipline. And I'll tell you something else, he won't chuck me out. Oh, you're pathetic, Winchester. Do you really think he's afraid of you? Maybe. All right. It doesn't matter. If you've got anything to say about Wing Commander Rudd, say it to me. I'm thinking of launching my saucer, you know. It's already. Oh, yes. Well, I'm free. How about you? I thought this afternoon, if you fellas. Walk up, walk up, ladies and gentlemen. It is now my proud privilege to present the launching of the only genuine flying saucer ever to be made in the workshops at Cranwell. Positively, its first performance, the Endicott Flying Saucer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we just... Here we go. In, in just five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. I've broken a radio control contact. Oh, she's making safe for the commandant's house. Oh. Thank you so much. It's so peaceful and quiet here. One would hardly believe one was in the heart of the Royal Air Force. No, it is peaceful, isn't it?
extraordinary thing. Quite extraordinary. I seem to have seen this before somewhere. Repair of window, four pounds eighteen and six. Replacement of crockery, three pounds six and twopence. Repolishing of table, two pounds ten. Sundries, fourteen and sixpence. Total, eleven pounds nine shillings and twopence. This sum, flight cadet Endicott, will be deducted from your pay. All right, right, Sergeant. Left turn, left rail, quick march. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. right. Endicott. Sir? Did you, um, did you make this thing entirely by yourself? Yes, sir. I can see how you get into the air, but, uh, how do you control the direction of flight? That is, when you do. Oh, it's quite simple, actually, sir. Excuse me. You see, the whole disc, sir, oscillates in a circular motion, thus causing the main and alternating thrust, sir. Mm, damned ingenious. And what about stability? Well, the gyroscope inside, sir, is coupled to a Bowden cable, which serves the main air sir, mm -hmm. you see, which in turn drives the main elevators. This, eventually, sir, the power from this machine will be able to keep it in the air ad infinitum. This is just a prototype I have, but I have on my drawing board another one, sir, of a much more powerful nature, which should be able to stay in the air for an even greater Jet Solos, Fletcher, Endicott, and Winchester. <laughs> All the old firm together. This should please Winchester. About time something. <laughs> Charlie, clear taxi, runway 27, service wind 250, 20 knots. Weather warning, sir. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Line squall approaching. Wind gusting out to 35 knots. Cancel the solar flights. Power to Delta Charlie. Flight cancel. Delta Charlie, I repeat. Flight cancel. Return to dispersal. Line squall approaching Cranwell area. Repeat. Return to dispersal. Return to dispersal. Line squall approaching Cranwell area. I, I can't hear a word. That man's taking off. Stop him. Tell to Delta Charlie. to Delta Charlie, do you hear me? I say again, tower to Delta Charlie, do you read? No contact, sir. The radio must be out. Radio. I believe that of anyone but Winchester.
time again. Cramwell to Delta Charlie, do you read? Cramwell to Delta Charlie, do you read? No answer. If I could contact him. Delta Charlie, Delta Charlie, do you read? I can see him. He's approaching Cranwell now. Heading for runway 27. See you now, sir. Oh, send him in. Well? You wanted to see me about today's solo, sir. What about it? Well, I, I had a bit of radio trouble, sir. Don't tell me that. I had your radio thoroughly checked this afternoon. There's nothing wrong with it. You switched it off, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes, I did. It's just that I was all set to go and the weather didn't look too bad to me. Oh, the weather didn't look too bad to you. Since when do you make the rules around here? You think you're rather smart bringing that plane in. But let me tell you something. You're not a pilot, you're a juvenile delinquent. The Commandant's given orders you to be grounded pending an inquiry. All right, sir, I did hear the order and I ignored it. I don't know why. I just felt so keyed up I couldn't turn back. Read that and initial it. Does this mean my dismissal, sir? Well, didn't you disobey an order once, sir? You can go, Winchester. Hello, Dennis. Excuse me, gentlemen, will you? Yes, sir. Well, what did he have to say? Well, sir, it isn't what he said so much as the way he felt. He escaped. You understand, sir, all good pilots know that feeling. It's too bad, isn't it? In a few months' time, that boy would have passed out from Cranwell with honors. So we throw the book at him. We lose a pilot almost at the end of his training. Won't you be getting something, Granis? Discipline? No, sir. I'm not forgetting. I believe it'll come. But the boy who brought that vampire back today has the makings of a fine pilot. Granite, you know as well as I do that Winchester's been guilty of gross disobedience. I know you broke the rules once yourself. And the boy's father died trying to protect you. And well, now you're trying to protect him. You may feel you owe him something, but the Royal Air Force doesn't. Anyway, those are my views. I'll leave the decision to you. Permission to sit down, sir. Permission granted.
go on like this, you might see these youngsters at Farnborough someday. They're worth watching, sir. Can't have you time. <laughs> May I do mine? No, sir. Take your pick. Really? Oh, thanks, old friend. <laughs> nice fella, yes. Uh, he's an idiot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Certainly. May I have the pleasure, ma'am? Thank you. Oh, Raj. How do you like your new person? Oh, very much, sir. Quite a station, isn't it? Yes. I'll be sorry to lose you. I shall be sorry to leave, sir. I'm sure the air minister will be glad of a satisfied customer. Did you meet him? Oh, yes, yes. Good. So we shan't be seeing anything of you after tonight? Oh, I suppose not. I don't think the wing commander will lose any sleep over us. I don't think I will either. Don't you think this has gone on long enough? Shall I tell you why you don't like him? You know why? Because deep down you're exactly the same. Only he's learned his lesson. One day you'll learn yours. When you do, I hope you won't suffer as much. Suffer? Can you imagine that, sir? Brisbane to New York in 35 minutes? Yeah, well. <laughs> mm. Would you like a glass of wallop, sir? Oh, oh, I have a whiskey and soda. Thank you, sir. Barman, can I have a whiskey and soda and a beer for me, please? Thank you. Of course, you're not serious. Serious, sir. I've never been more serious in my life. Oh, Do you realize thanks. that all these runways will become obsolete mm. and a flying saucer with variable thrust will be able to land anywhere? Perhaps I haven't quite understood you. Surely, in that case... Oh, hello, Wing Commander. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Well, let's look at it this way, sir. If you can imagine a vast wing, crew and passions of space inside is like, uh, how can I put it? Like a, the booking hall in Piccadilly Underground. And the whole thing is stabilized by gyroscopes. Is he boring you, sir? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Uh, not a bit. I'm, I'm fascinated. Well, as I was saying, sir, even an idiot could understand this. The whole thing is powered by gyroscopes so that when the thrust brakes are applied, she can hover over a vast city and come excuse to... Excuse me, sir. Uh, you want it on the telephone. Darling Street. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, you, you will excuse me, won't you? Certainly, uh, sir. Uh, do you mind? Oh, not at all, thank sir. Thank you. <laughs> what a charming old gentleman. Downing Street. That piled off, sir. And the kit was the Minister for Air. I won't need this for a start, will I? The old wings. Oh, well, back to the old training plane. Where's my knock on? Oh, 